They were dealt a very tough situation for 18 to 22 year olds on uh, Sunday. And I think they got together and, and asked if I'd be interested in being their interim head coach here. Of course, I said yes. And the first thing I told them, I said, we're all inter interviewing for jobs right now. We started Monday interviewing. I said, we have two phases. We have Georgia Southern, which we took care of today. We have Idaho in two weeks. But I asked them not to feel sorry for themselves or the coaches or anybody else, but go out there and be a pro. We're all getting paid. Even, these, even the students now are getting paid a little bit, these student athletes. So I said, this is what pros do. They go out and they take care of business. And I was telling Allison, this didn't surprise me at all because of the week we had starting Monday. We had great, we had great energy out there. Execution was good. We had a lot of juice and energy. We did a lot of situational stuff to try to help ourselves. I think we got better today. We weren't perfect. Uh, but it, it carried on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They were having fun, but they were focused. And when, when you have those kind of days back to back to back, you're going to play well on Saturday. And for the most part, we played pretty darn good today. Well, I just think we had a lot of energy in, in juice. And I think they really believed that they were going to win the football game. And the kicking game kind of looked like it was going to rear its ugly head again. And it did a little bit. Uh, but we got it corrected in the second half. I uh, can't say enough about Brandon Wright. He did a great job. I asked him to go in there and, and kick in the second half. He gets a little bit more height on the ball. And we, did a, it, it, we just made some you know, nice uh, or corrections, and it, we, we executed well in the kicking game in the second half. Defense, offense, I thought, played well. We, got, we are going to be aggressive. Since I've been here, we throw the ball down the field. Our best players on offense are some guys outside that are playmakers. They have been for three years. We have a couple guys hurt that were really instrumental in the, into this program that couldn't play. Some young kids have stepped up and, and made, some, made some huge strides. So we were going to stay aggressive and throw the ball down on the field. And we ran it on them good enough. They got some big dudes, you know, inside. They're about 380, you know, both those guys inside. So we, we ran the ball well enough to get people you know, coming downhill, and then our play action stuff, as you saw, shots down over the middle, uh, they were there. Defensively, I thought we swarmed to the football for the most part and, and made some great plays, you know, in the second half. And, and we played well on defense all year. We, we took a little bit, little step back last week for whatever reason, but we, we played pretty good defense this whole year. Unbelievable. He's, he's a leader. And... This was it for him. And it was important for, for me and the coaches to send our seniors out with bragging rights in this series. Hey, the young guys, they're going to get to go have this three, four more years. Okay? The seniors aren't. And they hammered us up here two years ago, one of the worst defeats I've ever been involved in. And we went down there and, and got after them and embarrassed them. This was the rubber match. And I wanted to make sure that we sent our seniors out that way. And Keith took it upon himself to make sure that he was going to do everything he could. This was his last shot. This was their last uh, shot in playing in the, in the Georgia Dome. And they want to make it right, and they did. I'm really happy for the seniors. And that was the first thing I told them before we went outside. I said, we got your back, seniors. And these young guys are going to make sure that you guys go out of here winner with bragging rights against Georgia Southern. I don't even remember. <laughs> you got a big win, Coach. Yeah. Uh, it, it's never easy stepping out of a, a situation like this. Um, but getting this win and then you still have one left for the, for the season, uh, what does it mean to the program and the whole goal? Well, it, it, means, it means everything. It, it, it shows whoever's going to be the next head coach here, it's going to show him the type of guys he has here. There's good kids in this program, and we have had a lot of injuries. And the, the sky's the limit here. And with, uh, you know, with the addition of purchasing Turner Field, that's going to level the playing field and recruiting. Because what that does for, for, for young people, you know, 17 to 19 years old and their parents, it shows a commitment to excellence. And that's just the way it is. It started in the SEC years ago with this arms race for facilities, and it's a big deal. And if you don't have them, then people that are buying and shopping, 
they're not really, they're saying, where's the commitment here? We don't see it. So it's hard to tee it up against some of those other schools that have the big time facilities and whatnot. So, you know, that with, with Turner Field and, and the caliber of athlete we have right here, and we still need a couple more, but we had a really good recruiting class last year, and we've had a couple, you know, good recruiting classes prior to that. So with the type of caliber of player they have here, the chance to move into a, you know, into a top-notch facility, this can take off. I've heard somebody, Quiet Giant or something like that, you know, that's, that's, that's legit. That's not BS. That's, that's legit. I go against those guys every day, 16 and 10. You know what I'm talking about, and they're as good as there is. Believe me, there's, there's some good DBs in this conference, but they've made Robert Davis a lot better receiver. They made Juwan Nobles a lot better receiver, and we make them a better DB because that's a lot of talent on the field right there. Those, those guys maybe, maybe can play on Sunday. And when you go against somebody that good and that challenging, and it gets heated now. We've had some heated battles over the years with those guys because they're all proud and they all compete. It just makes you better and better. And when you get those kind of numbers, go, you know, that type, type of talent, then you're going to win games. I can't say enough about Glenn Smith because he is the most unselfish football player I've ever been around. He asked to play running back last year because he thought he could help us. I went to Coach Miles and I said, I think he can help us and he wants to do that. And he did and he helped us. We had all these injuries at receiver. What did we do? Ask him to come back and play receiver when he was playing running back. Just totally unselfish and is really a good athlete. It takes, a, it takes a talented athlete to be able to run the football like Glenn does and run routes like Glenn does and catch the ball like Glenn does and, and break tackles like Glenn does. So he's an outstanding football player, but more than that, he's a better person. I told uh, what I didn't want was I did not want stupid penalties. Did not want that. We cannot have that. And you can't win any game, let alone this type of game against this you know, type of school that has a lot of tradition and great players as well. You can't – the first rule to winning is keep from losing. And when you do stupid things, you're not going to win very many football games. And I said, when you're on your job interview, which we all are, and you put that on your resume, you're going to have a heck of a hard time getting employed. And I'm talking about the players, coaches, everybody. And so they bought in, you know, we bought into that. And I thought we played pretty smart overall. Good things happen when you swarm to the football and run the ball and knock the ball around and knock it out. That just gave us another shot. Like we didn't, have, we had plenty of juice and that just was another shot, you know, of adrenaline for us and, and uh, that's, that's what we want to be able to do is swarm the ball, knock the ball out. And when you have fast physical guys on defense, you get turnovers. When you don't, you're not going to knock balls out. Just like a lot of these guys, warriors. These guys are warriors. You guys have no idea how many guys – are playing hurt right now, and that guy right back there, number 45, is one of them. He's got ribs, he's got shoulders, he's got everything, and a number of guys on defense, number four, has played hurt since I've been here. And the guy can barely get off the field, he can barely get on the field Tuesday and Wednesday, and he just keeps playing. And there's a number, I, I can't, I, just, there's a number of guys on this football team that have played hurt because they're competitors, and they're great people, and they want to win. I'm playing with house money. I'm playing with house money. That's, that's, no, I, I wanted to be aggressive, and I promised our players that we were going to play downhill, get over our skis, and we were going to play to win. And I don't think had I wanted to punt that 
that that's playing to win. And the last time I checked, our punt team had been all that solid in the last three or four weeks anyway. So really, that was an, that was an easy decision for me. And I had faith in our guys that we, can, that we could have got the first down, and we did. That was really pretty easy. Yes? Oh, absolutely. When you get in a rival game like that, that, that every, every little thing we can use to fuel the fire, we're going to use. And, and absolutely, we want to keep them from going to a bowl game, just like they thought they were going to keep us, you know, last year. And so that, that, was, that was good stuff. And yeah, that absolutely was in the back of our players' minds. Just keep believing, just keep playing. I, I told those guys, there's going to be, and I, and I use, you know, Muhammad Ali, and he's one of my favorite athletes ever, and he is a warrior, and he got knocked down many times. And I told these guys, there is going to be adversity in this football game, like there is every Saturday at this, at this high level, level of football. And you can't worry about, if somebody scores on you or you go down 13 or 14 or even 20, don't look at the scoreboard until the game's over and just keep believing in yourself and keep chopping wood and good things are going to happen. And we did that because, you know, we've kind of been a fragile team a little bit. And when a couple, you know, when we've had some scores go against us and you can see it and you can feel the air coming out, I never felt that today. I really didn't. Even, even right before half, you know, that we let them back in the game. We had them, and we let them back in the game. But I never, never saw any panic. And the first thing I did, I went in the locker room, and I started looking around. Because a couple weeks ago, I went in that locker room at halftime, and, it, and I think we were up three or something like that, and you would have thought we were down 21 points. So I could feel the energy still at halftime. People were saying, hey, we got this. We got to make a couple adjustments here and there, but we've got this thing. This is going to be 30 minutes. This is going to come down to who makes plays and who wants it more, and and uh, that's what it came down to. Can you speak to the play of uh, Connor Smith coming off the injury a couple weeks ago? He was hot a couple of weeks ago before he got hurt. He almost threw for 700 yards, and I thought he was really hitting his stride. And he struggled a little bit a couple of weeks ago, and he was not. He wasn't healthy, but he wanted to help his team, and he just wasn't healthy. He's, he just gets better every week. And you guys know how good Nick Arbuckle was. Connor Manning is probably a little bit ahead, ahead where Nick was after year one. If you guys go back to year one with Nick, there, there, was some, there were some times where we struggled a little bit, but Connor Manning, I think, in another year is going to be pretty freaking awesome because he played pretty big today. And he's still not 100%, but he's a lot better than he was. I'm not leaving it. Yeah, they gave me a game ball and they gave me a shower. And at my age, I, I thought I was going to have a heart attack when that cold water hit me. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Beat up. But uh, I think... Uh, you know, at the end of the day, getting a victory like that and knowing what that victory means, um, just besides the final score, it, what it means to all those guys in the locker room, what it means to all the younger guys who are watching the older guys uh, as they go through everything. Um, I, the pain does not even phase me right now. I am so excited and so happy for the guys in that locker room. And uh, they, all, they all held – each other together and we stayed together and we just kept fighting for we gave up 17 unanswered points but we held together and at the end of the game when it really mattered we stepped up and made the plays so tell coach to do what he did this game no but uh i mean we just got to keep working um one thing that we want to do is we want to go out this season on the right note, which is winning these next two games or this next one game. Um, we have to make a nice little trip out to Idaho, but uh, we're just going to get back in the weight room, um, start working out, get back in the film room, study our next opponent, and we'll be ready. So.
two and one. Two and one. Um, we we went down there and beat them pretty bad last year, and then this year they came up here, and we started seeing the photos again of Paulson Stadium North, and I think that lit a fire under some guys' butt. And then uh, we had the Coach Miles situation going on, and uh, a lot of guys were sad about that, but then a lot of guys ended up turning that around into motivation. And so not only was it – was this our bowl game and was it a rivalry game, but we were also playing to do it for Coach Miles. So, um, I mean, I, I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everyone has a role and you control what you can control. You get the ball in your hand, do what you can do without doing too much. If you're blocking somebody, make sure you block that guy for that one play, however long you got to block him. Um, guys were winning in the one-on-one uh, coverages and the routes, and guys were winning in run blocking up front. Um, and I mean, we everyone just seemed to have that same goal in mind. And we put our heads down and we kept battling and we came out on top. Oh, yeah, definitely. And another thing I can owe it to is uh, just the chemistry that Connor Manning and I have built. Um, you know, when when I give him a certain look before the play even starts and he gives it back to me, I know I'm all good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was just stuff that we repped in practice, things that we went over in film, extra film work, everything like that. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that there was things that I said to the guys on the sideline, such as, this is our team, what are we going to do from here? Because we saw, we've been in positions like that before, where we come out strong and we've been up, and then we act like we don't know what to do the rest of the game, and things slip away, things get out of hand, don't go the way we want them to. But we made sure that it wasn't going to be that way again today. So. Oh, it was... It was something special. I mean, when you when you can see as many people as that in the dome and kind of make it look packed um, and just not only to see them there but to hear them and to feel them, it, it definitely gave us a boost. Like when they started going on those little scoring uh, streaks and our crowd started to pick it up and then our sideline started to pick it up, then the play started to pick up. So, I mean, it was definitely a, a pretty big role in this game and the outcome of it. So. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, seeing all the pictures and everything, that would be awesome. To say that I got here on my visit and they said I'd be playing the next four years in the Dome, and then to getting here and now I'm at my fourth year and this was my last game in the Dome, I would definitely love to play in that new Dome. And, you know, who, who knows? Maybe I'll get an opportunity to come back and coach in it or something like that, but you never know. Um, one thing I can definitely tell them with 150% certainty is it's not about the school. It's not about the football. It's, it's about the guys that you're going to be with for the next four years in that locker room. Because the one thing I'm going to remember about this victory is seeing Robert Davis with tears in his eyes running to me, telling me how much he loves me and telling me that we did it. Because we are 2-1 and one in our – well, they've only been in the conference three years. We've only played them three times. But we're 2-1 and one against Georgia Southern. And I, I've never felt so good. That's it's, – it's awesome. It feels good. That uh, victory was for Coach Miles. I felt like a lot of the players felt the same way. Um, I just wanted to get that out of the way first. That one's for Coach Miles. You know, we loved him. We wish he was here. But, you know, things didn't work out. But that was for him. Yeah, I know uh, we started off fast, um, kind of 
what we were hoping for. We were going to be uh, real aggressive, and we kind of slowed down there in that second quarter. But we knew um, we had, I mean, we had opportunities. We kind of shoot ourselves in the foot with some penalties, maybe uh, not conversion on third down. Um, but we knew, you know, if we came back in the second half, uh, played our football, and, you know, go down and drive, put up, put up points, you know, it was going to be big for our, for our team and our, for our defense, you know, because, uh, I mean, our defense played great all year. And we knew, you know, we get them the lead, you know, the, they'll shut it down. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, coming off the uh, I missed a couple games, uh, my shoulder, it's probably felt the best it's, it has um, since the beginning of the season. And I know a lot, of the, a lot of the times in the beginning of the year, we weren't really connecting on the big shots down the field. But uh, we just kept building chemistry. You know, you can only build chemistry from being on the field with the guys. And I felt like throughout the season, uh, offensively, we kept building off that. And we, farted, we started, started landing those shots. Yeah, I mean, I I remember I told the seniors, you know, this was for them. Uh, everything I do for the last last two weeks is for them, especially this one. Um, I mean, definitely gonna sure miss those guys. Um, I, I mean, it's been it's been an honor sharing the field with them, and be able to throw the ball, put them in their hands, and watch them do what they do. Uh, it's been pretty special. Uh, yeah, I mean. I really didn't know what to truly expect because um, I was preaching to the team. Uh, kind of we have to approach this game, you know, it's going to be a little more juice, but we have to be disciplined and smart. Uh, can't shoot ourselves in the foot. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's just another football game. Uh, but, you know, you, you definitely felt, you know, the energy in the building coming out against that team. And uh, it, meant, it meant a whole world to me. But at the same time, it was for the seniors. This one was for Coach Miles, so I mean, it was pretty special. Well, last week was was very uncharacteristic of us. You know, we we struggled and stopping a lot of things that they did. So our focus this whole week was just being strong up front. You know, everything starts up front with the D-line. So I just got those boys to be strong for just for me and for the rest of our seniors on the line. Um, we train with Coach Sop, basically. That's all we. That's all there is to it, you know. He got all of our guys ready, uh, not just our D linemen, but our outside linebackers too. So those guys are also physical with their hands, and we were able to stop a lot of that just by shifting our formations or shifting our D line over, just to you know um, accommodate for the extra tackle that they had on one side. Um, just that, just that willpower. You know, we we preach on getting three takeaways um, every game, so we just really focus in on just getting those takeaways. Yeah, man, he's a. I, I'll give him his credit. He's a great player. You know, he's really good with his feet. He's really good at making smart decisions. So, you know, it was just, it just came down to our technique. You know, the things that we practice all week. And, you know, it showed. Talk to about your last four downs. You guys got there back up against the, the end zone. And uh, not a lot of time on the clock. Take us there. Um, well, me personally, I was on the side too. So it kinda, that kind of hurt. But I was just watching, you know, we were just watching just times moving slower than ever. But, you know, our guys, even to the last second, they were still focused. We knew it would come down to us on defense. So I just kept – Encouraging those guys to stay focused all throughout the game until zero hit the clock. Oh man, it's it's special. I mean, you know, I also just like every guy on our team, we have a lot of friends that either went to Georgia State or Georgia Southern, so we know a lot of those guys down there. So it's just ultimate bragging rights for the year. 
Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Well, like I said, I just preach focus to him, man. You know, we can't never get too high or too low in the game. We just got to stay even kill when the bad plays come or when the good plays come. And that just that even kill just helps us stay focused and maintain our play throughout the game.